welcome back so in this video i will show you that how we can add validation to our forms in react using formic package okay so this is the uh, form that we're going to build in this video so we can basically add validation to all these fields for example if i don't type here name it will throw error that name is required i can type here my name okay and the same way we have the email if i don't type here email phone number password it will throw the errors like this okay now if i type here invalid email i can type here test at gmail and it will throw me error that invalid email address i have to type here dot com so it will go away now for the phone number i also have to add here a valid us phone number so i type here um, phone number like this okay i also have to add here plus one so if i type here this one now the error is gone so this is a valid phone number for us okay so in the same way we have to add here correct password if i type here like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see that password must contain one capital letter, small letter, number, and special symbol. Okay, so I type here capital R E A C T one, two, three, at. And you can see that the password is correct. In the same way, I have to I type here the confirm password. If I type here wrong password, like uh, R E A C T one, two, three, at, at, you can see that the password does not match. So you have to remove here one at. Now it is a correct password. So in this way we will add validation to all our fields using formic package so now let's continue to this video okay so here i have uh, empty react project you can see that uh, it is entirely new project so now let's install our formic package and add validation to our form so first of all i exit from my terminal and i type here npm i formic okay that just save i will install this package okay so i restart my server and now first of all i have to add the bootstrap uh, link so here i have get bootstrap.com slash docs version 5 so i simply copy here the bootstrap cdn from here and i go back to my vs code in the public index.html and i put that my um, cdn link here okay so i simply close this one and now i go to my um, app dot js and I simply remove this from here and I type here div with class of container which is bootstrap class container and then container floor to make it responsive so container dash fluid okay and then in that I will create here uh, another div with class of row so row is also class of bootstrap and then here I add my custom class here that is wrapper okay and in here I create another class that is div dot column 10 so I give it column 10 and on large screen I will type here column lg dash 5 okay and then in here I have to add my form so for that I simply first of all import here import I have to import that from formic okay that I have installed so I have to first of all import the form from formic then I will import the formic itself okay and then I will import the field the form field so I will import form formic and field from the formic package okay and then here I will type here formic that I have just imported okay and then in here I will pass here first of all class name so i type here class name i give it class name of um, bootstrap class that is shadow dash lg so it will give it a shadow to this form okay so it is a bootstrap class and then i will also add here the initial values of the fields so initial values and that is going to be first of all i have to add here the name so by default it is going to be an empty string then i have to add here the email okay then i will add here phone number okay that is also going to be empty string then i will add here the password okay that is also going to be the empty string and after initial values um here i have now access to the formic so i type here formic okay and then i can use my fields here okay so here with this formic we can basically access that if we have any errors if the uh, if this particular field is touched okay so with this formic we can access that 
and this is provided by the formic package and now what we can do here is we can simply uh, create here our form so form and I will um, type in here first of all h1 so I type here sign up okay and then I give it class let's give class to this h1 I type here margin bottom of 4 okay and now I have to create my first field so I type here um, div I create I use here bootstrap class which is form dash group because I have to group the label and the input field okay and then I also give it margin top of 4 and in that I first of all create my label and I call HTML for his name so this is for name and the label name is going to be also name then I have to add here the field so I have to use here the format field so I use here field okay and then here first of all um, I give here name name to this field is also going to be name because this is name field and then I have to give here the type so type is going to be text okay and then class name and for the class name I will use here a uh, form form dash control okay and after that um, I think so this is a self close so I type here this okay simply save this one and now before uh, going to the Google Chrome I simply go to my app.css or index.css I will type here dot wrapper okay which is the class that I have um, used here this one so first of all I will type here display is going to be flex okay then justify content center then align items center then I use here margin top um, let's type here forum okay and then I use here font weight to make it bold I use here 700 okay I simply save this one and now if I go back to my Chrome okay and if I see you can see that here we can get here our uh, name and the uh, input field and what I do is I think so I have to go back and give here shadow large um, to this so do this form so I use here class name that is going to be shadow dash lg okay simply save this one now if I go back uh, you can see that I get here shadow so now let's give here some padding and border radius so I go back to my index or CSS so in the wrapper I have the form so I will give it padding 2.5 RAM and 3 RAM okay then now let's give some uh, border radius um, 15 pixel I think so is enough simply save this one and now if I go back you can see that here we get here our form so now let's first of all validate this input field and then we will move on and validate all our fields okay so now I go back here in the app.js here in the formic I will offer initial values I type here that validate that we have to validate it validate form okay so I simply copy that from here now let's define it so I type here um, in the app component const uh, validate form and now in that we will get our values of the form okay okay so now with these values we can access all our form values so first of all I define here error okay so that is going to be an empty object at start okay and let's call it errors and then I check that if values dot name okay so I check that if not values dot name that the name is not entered in the values field then I have to throw the error okay so I give error dot name name is required okay so we will simply 
type here that first of all the adder is going to an empty object then we check that if values dot name which is this field uh, this one with this name and if the values dot name doesn't have any value then we will simply set error dot name is equal to name is required okay so now you also have to show this error message in the form okay so what I do is I simply scroll down and here after this field okay so after this field I simply type here that now I use here formic so if formic dot touched dot name so touch mean that if someone or the user has touched this input field so if user has touched this name field and also we have to check that and formic okay dot errors dot name okay so if we check that if the user has touched this name field and also the errors contain this name error then we have to display the error so what I do is I simply type here that if that is the case then I will simply type here div with the class name of invalid feedback that is bootstrap class that will basically show the error in the red color so feedback okay and then that I have to display the error message so the error message is formic dot errors dot name okay and else we have to do nothing so I simply type here null okay so if I simply save it and also I have to use the same logic for the class name so what I do is I actually just um, let's copy first of all this class name okay then I add here logic that if formic dot touched dot name that this name field is touched by the user and also formic dot errors um, dot contains any error with this for this field then we will add this class okay uh, form control but we also add here is invalid so this is also a class that will make the uh, field uh, basically red okay else we are going to only display the field with normal form control uh, style so these are bootstrap classes basically okay so I simply save this one and also I return from here the errors um, this these errors okay so now if I simply save it and go back to my Chrome and if I reload this page so now if I don't type here anything for example if I type here nothing you can see that we get here name is required so if I type here any character you can see that the name is entered now you can also add here one more uh, uh, check if you want for example if I type here that um, else if the values dot name dot length okay so if the length of the value is greater than 15 then I will throw another error that errors dot name is equal to must be 15 characters or less okay so I simply I save this one and now if I go back and if I type here like this you can see that we get here error that must be 15 characters or less if I remove any character you can see that error is gone if I type here more characters you can see that it will it will throw the error in this way okay so in this way it will work so now we have successfully added the validation to our name field now let's add our email field so I go back and then I simply I copy this from here this field so I copy this form group actually copy that and I paste it here for the email so the name is going to be email type is going to be email again label name is also going to be email and it is also for email okay and then I also I replace this with email and email okay so now I have to define the error messages for the email okay so now we have to validate first of all we have to check that if the email is entered or not and then we have to check that the email is a valid email now you can also use the regular expression if you want to validate that but I will use one amazing package that is called validator okay 
so I simply install it here first of all that is npm i validator okay so I've installed this package and I will import it here so import validator from validator okay I restart my server okay so now I have here my um, validator now let's use that so first of all I check that if not values dot email means that the email is not entered then I will simply throw here errors dot name is going to be email is required okay else if I type here that uh, validator dot is email so is email is a function of this validator in that we can pass the email and it will return true if the email is valid and return false if the email uh, is wrong okay so I type here values dot email okay so actually you have to type here not so not validator dot email and pass the value in that it will return true or false so if it is not valid email then we will simply throw here errors dot name that is going to be uh, invalid email address like this okay so now if I go back to my Chrome and I type here for example nothing so it is not displaying any error I go back so that is errors dot email that is also errors dot email simply save this one email okay so now if I go back and often type here nothing it will show me this error that email is required for example if I type here test so invalid email address at gmail.com now the error is gone if I remove this you can see that it still show me the error message so if I simply remove this dot from here then again it is invalid email address so name and email validation is added successfully now let's add the validation for our phone number field okay so for the phone number um, I simply copy it from here simply copy that and I put that here okay so for phone phone number so I type here phone okay and then for the type that is going to be text okay type is also oh name is going to be phone number then type is going to be text okay and then here I select all these and type here phone number okay and then go to the top and here I will check that first of all if again if values dot phone number is not entered then we will simply errors dot phone number is going to be phone number is required okay else if now I will use here a validator package again so I type here that if not validator dot is mobile number and the mobile number I first of all type here the phone number value so that is going to be values dot phone number okay and then I have to add here um, that which phone number you want to validate so in this case the US number so I simply type here um, EN dash US you can select that according to your requirements so now if I simply save this one or uh, basically we have to actually type here um, errors dot phone number that is going to be invalid phone number Okay, so that is also errors so if I simply save this one now if I go back to my Google Chrome and the, uh, refresh it so now if I enter here nothing you can see that phone number is required if I type any uh, valid US phone number for example type here 786 um, 3961234 you can see that the error is gone so it is a valid phone number for US now if I want to also add here plus one the country code then I can add one more option uh, here I can simply type that in the options I type here strict mode if I type here true then you also have to enter here the country code so simply save this one and go back now if I reload it and if I type here again 706 
can see that invalid phone number so if I add here last one now the error is gone so it is optional if you want to use that or not uh, this strict mode if you uh, make it true then you have to also add the country code like this okay otherwise it will throw you the error like this one okay and after that uh, we have successfully validated our phone number also you can also display here additional message like uh, the format of the phone number for example I type here plus one then I type here uh, six seven, eight, and this one one two three four okay one two three one two three okay so in this way you can show the pattern also to the user now let's validate our password so for the password um, I will simply copy this from here copy that and put that here so it is going to be the password field okay password so name is also going to be password type is also going to be password and then let's select all these that is going to be password okay and now let's go to the top and here again I check that if not values dot password then I will simply errors dot password that is going to be um, password is required and else if okay else if um, I check the strength of the password so I type in that validator now validator has a function that is called is strong password okay so I type here is strong uh, password okay so in that I have a pass here the password so that is values dot password so is strong password is basically it will take care of all the uh, strong password requirements like a user must enter here a one small one capital letter number special character small letter so this will take care of all, all of that okay and if it is not a strong password then we have to throw the error that um, errors dot password I type here password must contain one uh, capital letter okay so that is capital then I type here small letter then number and special symbol like that okay now you can modify these all error messages according to your app or application okay so if I simply save this one okay and I go back to my Chrome and reload it once again now if I type here like one two three four five six you can see that password must contain one capital letter small letters number and special uh, symbol I think so by default the uh, length of the password is eight let me check I type here validator I open it and let's go to this github page here I will search for is strong you can see that here so by default the minimum length is eight so lower character is one minimum character is a minimum uppercase is one so in this way these are the default values and you can also override these values by passing an optional object like in the VS code you can pass here uh, the optional object okay here you can override all these values so by default the length of the password is going to be 8 okay uh, you can see that here the minimum length is 8 okay so now if I type here strong password like you type here capital R E A C T then I type here one two three four then add you can see that the error is gone if I remove add the error comes back so in this way we can validate our password also and again you can override all these values according to your requirements of your app okay so I close this one now in the last field I have to enter um, the confirm password so I simply go back and I copy this from here I put that here and that is confirm password so I type here confirm 
password so name is also going to be this then I select this one and paste it confirm password simply save it and now if I go back and here I can simply type that um, if not values dot confirm password then I will simply uh, errors dot confirm password is going to be confirm password is required and now I have to check that else if the values dot password is not equal to the values dot confirm password this means that this password and this password are not same then I will simply throw that errors dot confirm password is going to be password does not match simply save it now if I go back and reload it for example I type here capital R E A C T one two three at okay if I type here capital R E A C T one two three at so I will not get any error if I type here one more at you can see that the password does not match if I remove it now it is valid password okay so now we have added all the validations for name email phone number password and confirm password again you can also use the regular expression if you don't want to use this validator package okay and also you can use more validations on each field if you want and at the last I also add here button so I use here div dot form dash control and that I simply type here button okay and I type here register okay I'll give it class name of btn btn dash log to take all space and then btn primary to make it um, blue okay and then I give here margin top and bottom of three then um, I type here margin top of four I think so simply save it now if I go back um, so I think so um, I have to add here form group so now if I go here okay so now I give the width 100 okay so now our form is successfully completed now I go back and now if you want to add submit handler to this form you can simply after this validate you can type here on submit okay and you can pass in here your submit handler okay submit handler if you want to handle other logic like want to send the request to the back end and like that okay so I comment out this one okay so that's the end of this video I hope that you understand if you face any confusion you can definitely post uh, your question in the comment section I will try my best to respond there okay and if you also want to check out my Udemy courses you can go to the link in the description of this video and also the source code of this video is available on my github and also the link is present in the description of this video okay so I will see you in the next video.